Hello friends, happy Friday. So this is an interesting story. Um, I'm at this place I've never been before. We're obviously, well you'll see in a moment, in very different surroundings. Uh, just happened to notice that there was a tobacco store that's like halfway between where I usually go and, and where I work. And uh, I stopped in there just out of curiosity to see what they had. Well, this place is barely a tobacco store. It's one of these vape shop, head shop type places. Uh, and I went back to their humidor and it was just, I mean, the, the place reeked of propylene glycol and, you know, it just wasn't a pleasant, and I, I was about to turn and leave because most of the cigars were not worth even looking at. And then I saw they had a full box of Alec Bradley Black Market, which I really enjoy. And it was wrapped in cellophane, so I'm hoping it hasn't picked up too much of the, uh, cherry vanilla vaping whatever uh, and we'll give it a shot it, it's uh well you know it's well humidified and everything so they're taking care of them i don't know i suppose it, that uh we shouldn't be too hard on those guys because you know they're they're experiencing the same sorts of things that we're experiencing. It's a whole do unto others uh, mentality. So it is Friday. Oh, please don't do this to me. <laughs> oh, this is bad timing. It's because it's cold. The uh, one problem with keeping a bick in your car when it's winter is that it, it becomes less reliable when you first pick it up. You gotta warm it up first. Mm. And it's funny, in the morning, when I'm uh, leaving for work, I uh, you know, usually have a pipe that I'll give a charring light to before I leave. And then when I get out to the car, I'm ready for the, the full light. Well, in the wintertime, the Bic doesn't work so well, so I usually have to stick around for a little bit longer to get the, the pipe going before I leave. And it's interesting how you fall into these patterns without even really thinking. Well, I think I've entertained the clientele here enough. I'm going to move along. Let's head for home. I'll back up and hopefully we'll be able to show you this fine establishment. So far, the cigar is perfect. tobacco convenience. It is more convenient. And one of the nice things about it is that it's uh, going to be a lot easier to get back on the road. Less traffic and all that. So, oh, I don't know. I actually was coming to this Ace Hardware here that you may or may not be able to see, but good little hardware store. I, I like, I don't like to do the, um, you know, the, the Home Depots, the Lowe's, if I can avoid it. I like the smaller places. Ace is uh, usually locally owned and uh, they have a fairly good selection of things. In fact, they have a lot of stuff that you can't find at Home Depot or Lowe's. But I couldn't find what I was looking for anyway. So it's Friday. Uh, 
I so I had last week off. I got through this week in a flash. I mean, th this week really seemed to just pass overnight. Uh, I don't know why time's going so quickly, but it's really rushing by. And I've got one more week until I'm on vacation for the rest of the year. So that'll be fun. I don't know exactly what our plans are. We're we're probably going to be doing a little bit of travel, just like day trip kind of things. We're not going to be gone for any length of time. And depending on where we go, maybe I'll do some travel videos or something. I don't honestly know what's beeping. Oh, oh, okay. terrible when our vehicles get smarter than us. So my wife got that new um, Hyundai Santa Fe that I think I talked about a while back. Um, every time we drive it, we discover something new about it. Um, it has an alarm. Like if you, if you put it like a grocery bag on the back seat and you go to get out of the car, it alarms because it thinks you left a child in the car. We don't have children, and we leave grocery bags in the back seat a fair amount. And I guess it's nice in case you forget that you've got something in the back seat, but there's a lot of times when, you know, we're stopping at one store, we throw a bag in the back seat, we want to go to another store. And to have this alarm go off every time is, is kind of aggravating, so... But, hopefully it'll prevent somebody from leaving their kid in the back seat. A strange phenomenon that I don't quite understand. I mean, the, oh, I'm going to get into trouble for, for what I'm about to say, I'm sure. But, you know, when I was a kid, I remember the car seat that we had. I mean, you could bend this thing. It was just this thin plastic. It was basically a place to put the baby so you could have your hands free for a little bit. And you stayed in that until you could sit. And as soon as you could sit up, you sat up and you sat wherever the heck you were allowed to sit. You might be sitting in the back seat. When I would go out with just, just me and my dad, I would sit in the front seat. And I have these great memories of driving places with my father. I don't know where we were going. Listening to, to the radio, you know, he liked... He grew up in the, the 50s, and he liked the, the old East Station at that time, and listening to, to that music with him, and just seeing the, the city slip by. Uh, now, you're not allowed to do that. In, you know, until a ridiculously late age. You have to sit in the back, and you have to be in a car seat. That's crazy. I know there's reasons for it, I know, and, but, but, you know, and, and, I'm sure a lot of you older guys have the memory of being in the back of the station wagon or the back of the hatchback, you know, sitting back there and making faces at the cars behind you. Or one of the one of the best memories I have of, of any car ride was my dad driving back from uh, Wildwood, New Jersey. And I forget what the car was, but we had a, it was a hatchback. Um, and I was laying in the back, looking up, and I could see the, the stars. And it was, uh, you know, just going through all these, because my dad would always take back roads. He, he was one of these guys, he is one of these guys that likes his shortcuts. And uh, his shortcuts usually add about an hour to the trip. Sorry, I just had a notification come up, that's why I was poking at you. Um, yeah, so, so I, I don't know. I mean, I, I get safety, you know, I'm wearing a seatbelt. I, I grew up not wearing seatbelts and to be honest with you, it hasn't been that long that I've worn one consistently, but I'm not, I'm not in any way saying we shouldn't be safe. I just think we've gone so far over, overboard, especially with the kids in car seats things. 
and then the um, what got me on this was this this phenomenon of people leaving their children in the cars and the children expiring from you know heat heat exhaustion and all yeah, that's terrible but I was left in the car all the time you know that, that just wasn't a something you even thought about and we'd go out somewhere and my dad would say I'm just going to run in here you, you stay in the car I'd sit in the car and if it was hot I'd roll the window down I, I, I don't well I guess yeah I guess we're talking about little babies that are going to be able to roll the window down and I guess back then <laughs> you'd crack the window and everything would be fine but now you'd be afraid that somebody would come along and take the baby so well, I don't know again I'm not I'm not I'm not anti-safety at all I'm not trying to say that we should all you know let kids juggle chainsaws and stuff but I do think we take it too far I heard an interview with a guy I don't remember his name, but he wrote a book called The Dangerous Book for Boys. And later on, he came out with a second volume, which was The Dangerous Book for Girls. And these were all things that we used to do growing up. You know, people my age, people a little bit older than me will remember them. And parents would be horrified today. And during this interview, he said, you know, when he was growing up in, in the, I believe it was the early 60s, he said everybody carried a pocket knife. That was just what boys did. Boys had pocket knives. And, you know, from the age of about seven or eight years old, you were expected to have a pocket knife and you would use it to, to whittle, you would use it to play different games and all and he said, and I'll never forget the quote, he said, and yet surprisingly, the streets did not run red with blood. <laughs> and he's right. I mean, yes, you cut yourself now and then, but you learn to handle a knife. You learn not to cut yourself. I don't know anybody that, you know, mutilated themselves because they had a pocket knife. I had them. And I don't even remember ever getting cut with one. So, it's, it's interesting. I'd love to get more into the psychology of why we've, we've gone so far overboard. You know, it's not that we're stupid. It's not, it's not that people are, you know, intentionally trying to, to, to make life more difficult or something. But, but they're truly concerned and they truly believe that they're, they're doing the right thing. And when it comes to safety, you really get into a bind because you cannot argue. You know, as soon as you say, oh, come on, do you really need to have your nine-year-old in a car seat? You're the bad guy. And uh, nobody wants to be the bad guy. So what should I title this one? I gotta think about that. I gotta come up with a, a catchy title. Anyway, folks, we're past our customary cutoff spot, and I will soon be coming to the parking lot of the grocery store where I have been dispatched by my bride this evening to uh, to buy groceries. So let me do that. catch up with you later this weekend. So, take care folks.